<laughs> Father God, amen. There are five things our Father God did in the beginning that all fathers should do. If you're going to learn from a father, learn from Father God. Amen. Amen. Now let me tell you something and understand what I'm about to say. It's okay to depend on God and love God when you don't have a father or when your father's not there. But don't try to replace a father that's there with God. God's not going to let you do that because you have to honor your earthly authority father before you can honor him. Amen. That's why we got these crazy Hebrew Israelites and all this whole other crazy stuff. Those are men that are angry with their father. Their earthly father and they want to bypass that to get to the heavenly father because they don't like their earthly father. Or they don't like earthly fatherhood themselves because they don't take care of their children. But either way it's wrong because you have to honor the entire Bible. Not just the Old Testament laws of Moses. You got to honor the whole Bible. Amen. 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 And then you got to understand that as men and as fathers, it's going to get hard sometimes. Has it ever gotten hard for a father in here? Amen. It's going to get hard, but you don't abandon ship because the ship is rocking. Amen. And if you get mad enough at your father for doing that, guess what you're going to do? The same thing. So we want to make sure that we're honoring our fathers and we're not trying to replace our earthly father with a heavenly father. Amen? Amen. Amen. My dad is not here, but I can't make my heavenly father who he was. So what I do is I remember the things that he shared with me and the things that he did. We were way more alike than I knew while he was alive. I actually, this is going to trip you out. I know my father better now than I did when he was alive. I understand why he was doing what he was doing when he did what he did now. I didn't understand that when he was alive. So I kept a good relationship with him even posthumously. Why he's deceased. Now I ain't talking to him. That's witchcraft. You don't talk to the dead. The Bible calls that necromancy. We don't communicate. You keep doing that, you're going to hear something back. That's when it gets real. <laughs> no, I don't talk to him. I don't have to. His actions and what he did in his lifetime still speak to me and teach me things. People that he didn't like once he passed, now I know why. Because I tried to like them. And I see, no, they aren't likable. You know, some folks just aren't likable. Yeah. And so things my father did while he was alive, those things still are carried on in my life. My daddy was a powerful preacher. And he taught me the importance of the message. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He even would tell me, don't do too many antics and fancies. Don't do so much fancy stuff that you lose the meaning of the message. Yeah. Because the message is what's important. Yeah. yeah. I'd be on the organ, you know, behind him. I'd be urging him on and getting the crowd crazy and folk throwing their wigs and Bibles and everything. It wasn't a good service if a wig didn't come off. And I'd be provoking them from the organ, pulling all the draw bars out, Reggie. Making the organ yell and holler and repeat him and do the stuff he did. And after service, he'd be like, okay, you know, good, but don't, don't do so much that the people can't understand what I'm saying. The message was important to him. So guess who the message is important to now? me yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah and I'm living off of the things I have to remember 
And some of y'all, your daddy is alive. And you could talk to him every day. And you have art and issue with them. You can't get what you need to be who you're supposed to be. That's what's missing. You can't get it. Because God is blocking it. Put it in him and going to force you. Force you to fix that relationship. That's what happened with me. I had odd against my daddy. I wasn't going to talk to him. I told him we ain't talking no more. I'm done. Blah, blah, blah. And I had a preacher tell me. He said, man, God's got something great for you. He said, the salvation of millions are inside you. He said, but it'll never come out if you don't go reconcile with your father. Yeah. Yeah. So I thank God you better be able to hear when God is speaking. And here's the beautiful thing. You know, we, we're at church, so y'all hear me preach all the time. But you better know when God is speaking. And you better know when it's you. When God is speaking to you. Amen. Don't waste my time. I don't need friends like that. I got family. I don't need friends like that. So I don't need you around wasting my time if you're not going to hear when God is speaking. Amen. Because ain't but two folk going to speak to you, God and the devil. And you're going to listen to one of them. By not listening to God, you are listening to one of them. Then you're going to get tired, a little tired of ABC. I mean, it's a good church, and it's really good. And pastor be preaching, you know, it's good. But I mean, it just seems like, man, things are I'm just trying to. No, you're not listening. The washing and regeneration of the word makes you new every week. It's like a new experience for me. Am I right? It's a washing. It's just a new experience every week. So it shouldn't get old. If it's the word. If it keep going against your actions, it's going to get old. Because something needs to change. Can I preach in here? You know, I just don't preach for the fun of it. I just don't do that. That's not fun to just preach for the fun. I preach for the severity. I'm telling you the truth and I'm telling you something that works. Amen. Somebody like, please get on the five things. No, you needed to hear that. Amen. You building up roadblocks. Every time you come in here, hear the truth and don't apply it. Another barrier. Another roadblock. Another roadblock to the point to where your heart is completely bro- uh, 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 separated from what is going on in here. Amen. Then you got to look for the family in here that's thinking about leaving too. Yeah. Just come deal with it. When we had an altar prayer, man, you better come up here. When the deacons call for the folk, you better come up here. Just leave it on the altar. You don't think it's hard on all of us? Man, I had a tough week. I wanted to just quit everything. Let me come to the altar. Man, I had some bad thoughts about my wife. I wanted to choke her last night. Let me come and bring that on the altar. Lay my hands on the altar. God, help my hands. You know, God is saying, you know she'll whoop you. I saved your life. (laughs) Yeah, bring it to the altar. Amen. Lay it on the altar, whatever it is. But that's why we come in here. I don't want, look, I just don't want us to lose sensitivity to what God wants to do. Amen. Church start getting big, air condition blowing, you in here just chilling, and you make you making your church quota for the week. And I don't want that. I want these messages to help you. Amen. Amen. All right. Five things that God our Father did. That every father should do. You ready? Number one. (laughs) 
How are you a father? And you don't work. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking about being. Amen. And see, I thank God for our musicians because all our musicians got jobs. Amen. Church musician ain't no job. Look at somebody. All I've been, I thank God for Reggie. This is my man. Reggie has always had a job while he played for churches. Because God had a job. God worked. How many of you know God worked? God opens up his word with him working. When you open the Bible and go to the beginning, what is God doing? Working. Isn't that magnificent? He created everything in the beginning and was pleased with all that he created. So he enjoyed working. As fathers, we must work. I didn't hear no hand claps on that. That's the part every hand should have came together. Amen. If your husband don't want to work, that, that's your problem. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You ain't gonna sit up and play no PlayStation and on the internet living on some woman. We don't do that as men, as fathers. Not even fathers, as men. We don't do that as men. Amen. I can't be friends when nobody don't work. Brother, we're going to talk about that every time we talk. You're not going to want to be my friend. Every conversation is going to be about your slothfulness. Why are you slothful? But every man should be like God in this aspect because working and providing is a fatherly attribute. Amen. Men are providers for their families first. That's your first job. The nature of man is work and provision. And this example has to be what? Model first by fathers in order for their sons to desire a work ethic. So your son's worth, work ethic is going to be based on what they see their fathers do. That's why some of y'all struggle because you saw your mama doing it. And you want a woman to do it instead of you. Not nobody in here. Hey Amen. You get jumped in here for that. But that's why some men are like that. They didn't see the work ethic in a man. Amen. And so... They don't know how to keep a job. Amen. And you can't get mad on your job and quit. See, because you're not giving God nothing to work with. God trying to work with you. Y'all know God, God didn't just work creating the world. He's actually trying to work with you. He's trying to work with your crazy program sometimes. He's trying to help you get the way you're trying to get, but you won't give him nothing to work with. You ask him for a job, he bless you with a job, then you quit. Now, how he going to bless you? How he going to get a check to your house? He ain't going to rain checks from heaven. He need a catalyst. He need some way to bless you. He need your social security number on something so that he can legally bless you. <laughs> he want to legally bless you. <laughs> Amen. He don't want you reverting back to crack dealing. He delivered you from that. He saved you from that. Slinging weed and he saved you from that. But you won't give him nothing to work with. He want to promote you, but you won't give him nothing to work with. The nature of man is work and provision. It has to be modeled though. Boys must not only see their father's work, but they must see his consistency as well. Amen. Amen. My wife would tell you, when I was out of work and it took me a while to really, you know, because God was doing something different he, with me, but man, I'm not going to be in the house. If I ain't got no job, I'm going out and walking around acting like I got a job. I'm going to be the first one up 
and out the house. Remember that baby? I was always gone. I, when, when morning come, it's time to leave if I don't have no job. I need to go find one. Something somewhere. A old lawnmower in the corner. Something. Find me something. A water hose. Something. I'll water your grass. Something. Look at y'all. Uh -uh, I had Vicky, man. I had a daughter. I'm not going to let her see me laying up in bed. What time is it? 10 o'clock? Oh, okay. Nah, boy. When the cock crow, uh, 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 I'm out of there. Give me a long clock with that sound in it. And I'm going to go biblical Bible days. I'm getting out of here. Go work on something. Amen. That's all my kids ever saw. All they ever saw. Landon, I'm trying to stop him from working so hard. He crazy like I was. Stop working so hard. Always working. Always working. Amen. But he, until he get a wife, he need to work. Be busy. Amen. Lift the gym and pick the whole thing up. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> Amen. But that's that he saw my work ethic. I didn't have to teach it to him. He just saw it. And said, you know, I, I want to do that. Because I saw my dad. That was the same thing. He always, my dad preached and pastored and always had a job. See, y'all, that's another level right there. They don't know nothing about that, Elder. They don't, they don't know nothing about that. Pastor the whole church out of town. Three hours away. We'd leave service at 10 p.m. on Sundays. Get home at 1.32. He's at work Monday morning. Yeah, and I saw that, and I appreciated that. That taught me something. Amen, just by example. I'm teaching in here. Some of y'all, you know, y'all, amen. This is going to help your sons too. Amen. Everybody ain't going to be a rock star and a, a professional uh, uh, a ball player. We need jobs first. Amen. You hear the testimonies of the... Pro athletes and stuff, yeah, 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 they all had to do something. Get that work ethic in you. Boys not only see their father's work, but they must see his consistency. God did not stop working until he was finished with everything. That means God didn't quit. Now, what if God had quit on creation and we had half of earth and half the stuff? God finished what he started. Look at somebody say, he finished what he started. He finished what he started. He finished everything. Genesis 3 and 19. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. Y'all, the, the, the working is a curse. Amen. God was going to give us everything, but no, we have to act up. Now, he's commanding that we work. So men that don't work is breaking a commandment. So how the Hebrew Israelites, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. This fits perfectly. How you go worry about the Ten Commandments <laughs> and you break in the first commandment? The first commandment is the punishment for man's sin. Work. You ain't working with a megaphone and wearing felt out downtown. That's not working. That's bringing no money, day and night. They used to just have day shifts. Now it's day and night. And no money coming in. Yeah. So they do, they find them a woman that's got a good job and get out there wearing that felt. This is a commandment, man. Amen. You got to work. Look at somebody say, every father has to work. If God work, every father has to work. Amen. Women, it's okay. Y'all, Thank God for y'all's jobs too, but every man has to work. Yeah. What y'all doing should be optional. 
But a man, it ain't optional. He has to work. Amen. Number two, what did God do? He rested. Oh, this is so important. I wish I could teach this to my daddy. Maybe he'd live longer if he had rested. Because he worked and worked and worked and worked. Because, you know, that's what they taught him. When you chop cotton in your lifetime, then work is just, you, you just supposed to always be working. Amen. My daddy wake me up and make me do stuff. Go outside, mess something up, and make me go fix it. There is always something to do. You should not be asleep. <laughs> but I've since learned that <laughs> Daddy might have got this one a little skewed. We have to rest. Amen. Now, your rest, you don't rest more than you work. That's a demonic balance. Stay on the rest part, Pastor. No, we're going to stay here too long because you can't rest too long. You know, if you rest too long, no matter how good a work ethic you got, you start changing, don't you? Come on, man, tell the truth. You start changing. They give you too much time off. I got a whole month off, boy. Around day 23, you ought to quit. This is great. This is wonderful. Now, how can I do this and money still come? Let me figure that out. <laughs> Start feeling good. Because that work, work ethic, you got to keep that going. Amen. Amen. All right. God rested. After God worked, he rested. That's not God. Boy, somebody just Hebrew Israelite. Uh-huh. You got the white man up there. The man is God now, huh? After God worked, he rested. The almighty God, great God, magnificent, all-seeing, all-knowing, ancient of days did what? Rested. After he worked. Now, did God have to rest? No. He's God. He can say I rested and have rested. He's not in time, so he can rest as long as he wants, and it won't affect time. If he want to rest. But he rested on purpose. God did this because he wanted to show us that there is a time to work and a time to rest and enjoy what we have worked for. Amen. Remember when you was young and you bought the first thing from your first job? How good did that feel? That felt great. I remember my son, his first job, he got his check and took me out to eat downtown. Paid for my food. You couldn't tell him nothing. He was skinny then, but he had swole up this big from pride. You couldn't tell him nothing. He's like, I got it, daddy. I got it. I got it. And it was expensive, too. He's like, I got it. Man, he loved that moment. I'll never forget how he looked. That was wonderful for him to do that. But he was proud of that because he had worked for that money. Amen. He kept his first job for four years at Sprout Spring Roll. Some of y'all eat there now because Landon was working there. I talked to Steve the other day, the owner, and he still talks about Landon. He don't talk about Jay, but he talks about Landon all the time. <laughs> Jay's on a different list. We don't discuss that list. But Landon worked up there. We still get discounts when we go up there because he did such a good job. They remember him. Amen. So you want to enjoy what you worked for. Our human bodies must be cared for and there must be reflection time or we will implode from burnout of too much work. Reflection time. That's the rest time. You can't work every day. 
You aren't built to work every day. God told you what you're built for. He told you you have to rest. Our human bodies must be cared for and there must be reflection time or we'll improve from burnout. God gave us the balance. We must adhere to his example and give our bodies the rest that it needs. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't wait till your body tells you it needs rest. That means it's too late. But rest. Amen. What you working hard for is no good if you ain't here to enjoy it. If you expire in the process, it ain't worth it. I remember I had gotten sick back in 2009, and man, I just knew I was going to die. I had a family meeting and everything, and I told them, man, this might be it. I was that sick, really. And I went to see a doctor, my doctor in uh, Clearwater at the time, Dr. Reed, and he said, well, the first thing you need to do is shut EX Ministries down. I said, huh? He said, you got to shut it down. I said, you ain't no minister. Like, you don't know the word and the gospel. You are unsaved, doctor. (laughs) You don't shut God down. You don't shut what God is doing down. He said, well, what good are you going to be to your family if you die? I said, well, what did that have to do with it? He said, everything. He said, do you realize what you're carrying every day? He said, shut it down. He said, and when you reopen it, I promise you, it'll be better than it was before because then you'll be able to enjoy the fruits of it and not suffer. I didn't have nobody teach me that. I had burned my body completely out at 40 years old. And so I shut it down for, I forgot how long, six months or something, closed the office down, shut it down. You couldn't get a DVD, you couldn't get nothing. We were gone, off just off the grid. But yeah, I had to shut it down to save my life. But I was a workaholic. I kept working until I burned my body up. Burned my adrenals up and they still messed up. That's how hard I drove myself. Thinking I was doing God a favor. When all I had to do was read what God did and God rested. And I wasn't resting. Amen. And then when you rest, you reflect. Amen. You reflect. You're able to tweak things and fix things. And you know, when I get back... I'm going to do this different. I'm going to do that. But if you're constantly on the grind, you don't change anything. Look at somebody say, the grind kills. So you have to rest. Amen. We must adhere to his example. I'm preaching to somebody now. Amen. Women tell me all the time, my my husband, he just don't ever, he ain't ever home. He always working. Well, maybe he don't like you. Maybe you need to make things nicer for him. He'll want to come home. Look at somebody. The women are like, now wait a minute. This is Father's Day. You promised that you was going to stay on the fathers. Don't be kidding. <laughs> I just had to slide that in there. But yeah, but men, you can't do that either. Try to stay away from home to avoid an uncomfortable conversation. Uh oh. Amen. Don't you be scared of your wife. And I don't mean scared of her like she's going to whoop you. I mean scared to share truth with her. If you can't talk to her, you can't talk. Who you going to talk to? Amen. You don't talk to her, some old skeezer. Going to DM you one day. Clean. I notice you just carry so much and you just work so hard. And it's just good to see a man working so hard. Really? Always oh, stupid sometimes. Just stupid. Really? I mean, yeah, sometimes, you know, it is. You ain't said three words to your wife. You got a whole conversation going. You know, sometimes I be thinking, you know, and then it's right what you're saying because, you know, I... <laughs> Boy, you caught in a web. You just, you're just in a web. You can't get out now. You just up. And all you have to do is have a conversation with your wife. I'm preaching it here. See, this is too real. This message is too real for somebody. Yeah. Ha! 
have that conversation with your wife. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Oh, I hope y'all listen to me. But we, have, we must adhere to God's example and give our body the rest that it needs. We cannot be motivated by superficial things and end up destroying our temples. Amen. 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 You work so hard to get the car, you can't drive it. You don't have time. Why are you working that hard for a car? A car? A car? And your kids sitting there wanting time with their father. And you trying to pay for a car? And once they grow up, it's too late. You missed it. You missed it over a car? Some shoes? You working hard for some Jordans? Jordans. Better get some knockoffs. Cloud Jordans, not air. Cloud. <laughs> Man, I wore, boy, I wore whatever I had to wear so that I wouldn't overdo it trying to pay for stuff. Amen. That'll weigh on your heart trying to compete with folks. Ain't nobody looking at your shoes like that. Amen. Amen. And then you worked that hard to get those shoes for what? Oh, man, them tight. And half the church got them on. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. I mean, in here, you sure ain't going to stand out. Everybody in here got some shoes. You go join the old ship of Zion church. I know where I can go where ain't nobody wearing these shoes. <laughs> ain't nothing but old mothers in here. And Mother Sandra come in, uh-uh. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> we cannot worry about the don't haves to the point of ruining our health. Amen. We have to balance our work time, family time, and what? Rest time. Rest time. Look at somebody and say, go to, go to bed. No, no, look at somebody else and say, go to bed. Go to bed. Why are you up so late? <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed, go get in the, not go to couch, not go to recliner. No, go to bed, your bed. Amen. The later you stay up, the later the devil's up. You know, the devil, he's the one up at night. God, everybody else is done for the day. Bible says you must work to work while it is day, because when night coming, no man shall work. So at night, God ain't working. Everything's shut down. Heaven is closed. And you still up. <laughs> everything degrades when it get dark. TV, the movies, everything. Internet, everything just change. You should be asleep. Amen. Half the sins you fall into happen at night. You're not in your right mind because you used all your brain juice during the day. I know I'm preaching in here. I know I'm talking to a bunch of crazy young folk too. You better listen to me. Go to bed. Go to bed. Your body needs sleep. Jesus is the son of the most high God and he was God in the flesh. But when he knew he had to deal with a certain kind of possessed man in the graveyard, the Bible said he went below the boat and fell asleep. He went to sleep and he was sleeping so good that the winds and the waves couldn't even wake him up. Whole boat just rocking and reeling. He, he down there just, man, I got to get this sleep in because I'm going to have to deal with some stuff. When we get to the other side. They came down and woke him up, Jesus. 
the boat going to turn over and we all going to die. And Jesus is like, how are you going to die and life is sleeping on your boat? But they was crazy. They just us. They just us. That's how we think. Wake up, Jesus. But the Bible said right after that boat, right after they got off that boat, he ran into that dude and had to deal with an old ancient one. A demon spirit. So he was getting rested up for it. Some of y'all can't fight demons in your life because you don't go to sleep. Same demon been messing your life up all of this time. Because you won't go to sleep. You need sleep. Amen. When we overlook ourselves, uh, when we overwork, excuse me, when we overwork ourselves into bad health, then we are operating under a curse and not according to God's plan. Yeah, if you got so many jobs and you don't have any rest time, that's not God. You need to pray a consolidation prayer. God, I need all three of these jobs to equal one. So I can, first of all, be with my family. Second of all, be at church on Sunday. Because this is counterproductive to me, my fellowship, and what I'm trying to do in you. God is not going to give you a job that's going to kill you. Genesis 2 and 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he did what? Rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Y'all don't realize how much work goes into creating the whole world. You ain't thought about that, have you? A whole world? Some of y'all get a headache making a, a socket to me cake. All these ingredients, Lord have mercy. A whole world? Number three, what did God do? He multiplied. God is a God of multiplication. He multiplied. God created a world for his creation, right? He made everything that was made. So that he could multiply everything that he made. Let me say that again. He made everything that was made so that he could multiply everything that he made. That's awesome. He created man as a multiplication of himself so that he could be represented in the earth. Marriage and family is a reflection of multiplication. Men select wives. Y'all hear men select wives. Yeah. Amen. Can I, can I get a hand clap for that? Single town, can I get a hand clap? Come on, Rhonda, you ain't clapping loud enough. I need a clap from the single town. Yeah. Men select wives. Women, you got to be selected. Amen. You can't throw your handkerchief on him and want him to give it back so you can grab his hand. They do that kind of stuff, especially in church. Hey, man. The man wants you. But men select wives so they can multiply themselves in the earth just like God did. When a man creates a family, he is fulfilling God's desire for multiplying in the earth. And he is also improving his own existence. Did you hear that? So when you multiply in the earth, you're improving your own existence. Fathers should not just multiply, but care for and bless those that they create. Anybody can multiply, but you got to care for them and then bless them. Fathers should not just, oh, I just, just like our father God created a world that was good in his eyes. We should do likewise as a father. So everything God created, he said, was good. Don't marry her if she ain't good. You should be able to look at your wife and say, she's good. Look at your children and say, they're good. Yes, 
We should bless our children that we create and not abandon them. Our earthly inheritance is our children. So as fathers, we must make sure that they are raised the right way. When they fall, we must do what? Pick them up. You don't throw your children away. Amen. God never gave up on us, so we should never give up on our children. Amen. Genesis 1 and 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. He said, Be fruitful and what? Multiply. Multiply. And then what you multiply, you have dominion over. Number four, what did God do? God led. Even though mankind fell from the garden, God still loved them and instructed them so that they could still live. God, listen to this. Ooh, this is important. So when the Rukas went down in the garden, God didn't just go make another garden. Amen. He didn't look at the garden and roll his eyes. Oh. He wasn't sullen. He wasn't no emotional man that's going to quit because his family didn't turn out the way he wanted it to. Hey, uh uh-oh, I'm preaching now. No, 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 no. He ain't no, 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 no. The Bible says God spoke to the man, the woman, and everybody involved in what went down. God talked to him because that's what men do. That's what a father does. Oh, it went down under my watch. I got to bring everybody in here and talk about it and deal with it as a man. He he was not silent on the issue, but with authority, he chastised and then consoled. Fathers must rule over their home and correct the wrongs in them. But listen, fathers must be what? Must be vocal in their homes and not allow their wives to speak for them or children to take advantage of them. I'm preaching in here. This is good. This is good. This is good. You can't walk around sullen and not speak it in your home. Amen. I'm I'm just not a confrontational. You better become one. I'm just not a vocal. You better get vocal. Pray and ask God, Lord, help me talk to her. Help me talk to them. Help me open up my mouth because I'm I'm the authority and I'm in charge. So if this ship sinks, it's on me. So I got to say something. Well, I grew up in a house where, you know, the women ran everything. Well, you better change that. You got to speak, man. Amen. You got to talk to me when I come up to you. How you doing, brother? She's not around. You can talk now. How you doing, brother? Yeah, walk around and do. <laughs> no, man, you got to be vocal in your home because God was vocal. God did not let it go down without him finding out what happened. He's God. He knew what happened. You've ever done that with your kids? You knew what happened. Okay, Landon, what you do? You know what he did, but you want him to say it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's how God did He's, okay, man, what happened? <laughs> the woman did it. Okay, woman, what happened? The serpent did it. All y'all in trouble. <laughs> and everybody's getting punished. Because y'all was all in it. This is God. This is how he ruled it. This is how the man has to do in his home. Hey, you don't do it crazy. We ain't, ain't nobody acting stupid. But you bring order in the home because you're responsible for it. 
Yeah, and it's going to come up in you to not want to say something. But you got to override that and say something. Look at that, boy. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, we all struggle with that, but you got to say something. Can I sneak just a little something in for the women? Because I know it. I promised y'all I, I would stay on the men, but I need y'all's help on this one. Just a little bit. You got to stop making it uncomfortable for him to talk to you. Amen. Uh, you got to stop doing that. When he comes to you, don't be bringing up. Well, see, you got to uh, uh, He's trying to have a conversation. Let him talk. Let him lead. Okay, back to the man. Boy, that, that was so dry. I felt like I just cracked a bad joke on Comic View. But that's it. That's why a lot of men don't want to talk. Yeah, but he has to leave his house because God's going to hold him responsible. Amen. Just like he did Adam. Yeah. Right, sir. Amen. Amen. So God holds fathers accountable for the affairs of the home. So a father will either conf confront his family or be confronted by God. <laughs> fathers must speak and be vocal in their homes even when they do not desire to the devil will fight to cause men to error and feel they do not have the right to say or do certain things because of their own failures mm, y'all better hear me but how many of us have failed we all have failed so this is not a qualifier to give instruction Many of us are more effective instructors because of our knowledge and first-hand experience. Because we failed, this is why I'm beating you. Because when I did it, I got in trouble. So let me beat you. But daddy, I'm just being like you. I'm still going to beat you. You can be like me after I finish. Yeah, you don't be talking like that to your parents. We couldn't even ask our parents why. You get a random beating, you can't even say why. You can't even ask for the reason or the cause. The belt was the belt was hot and was just getting flung and it was hitting folks. And you got some. You couldn't ask, you couldn't ask no questions. But the devil will fight to cause men to error and feel like they don't have it. So many of us are more effective instructors because, our knowledge of, because of our knowledge and firsthand experience. God will continue to use fathers as the head of their homes even after making errors in judgment. God don't fire you from the head of your home because you made an error or you failed at something. Hebrews 12 and 7. If you endure chastening, God dealing with you as a son or as with sons. For what son is he who the father don't punish? That's, right. That's, right. That's not a son if you can't bring correction. That's right. That's right. And finally, fifth thing God did in the beginning, he loved. Man brought sin and death into God's perfect world, but God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son to die and save man. Amen. Amen. This shows the love of God toward his precious creation. He gave his own life for man to live. This is the love all fathers must have for their families. As a father, if you are not willing to die for your family, then you do not love them more than yourself. Do not become a father or husband if you aren't willing to give your life for them. I mean, folks join the army to give their life for their country. And you can't give your life, your time to your family? Father God shows us the greatest form of love. Not only did he create a wonderful place for us, but when we fail from it, he created a way for us to get back to it. 
It's the love of God that causes us as fathers to love our families this way. Amen. We must first allow God to love us in order for us to love others properly. Once God love, God's love is in us, we will sacrifice our own will for those that are under us, just as he did. Without God's love in us, we are selfish narcissists that care more about the way that we feel than the way we love. Mm -hmm. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Summary! Y'all enjoy this message? I know it was hardcore on some folks. Some of the women mad because I went back and, you know, but hey, we all in here. <laughs> Same <This ain't> heroes. <laughs> Father God has given us the best example of how to be fathers in the earth. He has shown us how to work, rest, multiply, lead, and love as fathers to our children. We should be providers for them. And listen to this, they be the reason that we work in the first place. Yeah. Amen, you ain't working for yourself. Our society wants us to work for our own enjoyment and fulfillment. But God worked for the enjoyment and fulfillment of his creation. We should live not for ourselves, but for those we create. We rest to enjoy the fruits of our labor and to be restored physically and mentally. Our enjoyment and fulfillment should come from the family we create by giving to them. Listen, providing, protecting, and being a priest to them should bring us more fulfillment than anything else in this life. Amen. Loving God, our wives and our children brings real joy in this life and it's not tied to superficial achievements and accolades that do not last. God made us to love one another and not to live for ourselves. So it's best to follow God's plan for earthly fathers so that at the end of your life, you will be fulfilled and pleased with those that you lived your life for. Amen. Amen. Psalms 127 and 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb a reward. As arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy, blessed. And fortunate is the man whose quiver is filled with them. Amen. Some of y'all got seven, eight kids. Happy, blessed, and fortunate are thee is the man whose quiver is filled with them. But listen to this. This is so important. They will not be put to shame when they speak with their adversaries in gatherings at the city's gates. You won't be ashamed. Why? Because if your kids are right and you've got them as the right arrows pointed in the right direction according to 127 and 4, then they don't embarrass you in front of other people. So when you're at the city's gates, your kids ain't the ones in the jailhouse. Your kids aren't the ones in trouble because you took the time to make sure that your children had what they need just like Father God. Make sure we have everything that we need. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. I'm going to call. Just call the fathers up. And we're just going to pray for all the fathers in here. Hardest job in our world today is being a father in 2023. We are the ones that they want to destroy, want to stop. They don't even want the mention of Father's Day. They want to end the holiday. But God wants to bless every father that's in here today. 
He sees you when nobody else sees. He hears your prayers. He sees the tough times. When you can't show your wife, your children, God knows and he's there. He don't want you to quit. He don't want you to give up. And the beautiful thing is, it gets better. It will get better. Many of us are overcoming things, stupid things we did when we were younger, bad decisions we made when we were younger. It takes a while to overcome some of those. Yes, it does. It takes a while to overcome some deficits you may have been born under, some things that you lacked in your upbringing. It takes some time to get past those things. All those things take time. They take time. Maybe you had a failed marriage. Maybe you've had children outside of your marriage. Maybe you've got, you know, all of that. It takes time to overcome some of this stuff. But I can promise you, it's going to get better. It's going to get better if you keep your faith in Jesus. It will get better. God is above all fathers. He's the best father. And he loves you. And he wants to make sure it gets better for you. Amen. Everyone just bow your, all the fathers just bow your heads. Look at all these fathers. This is amazing. Amen. With your heads bowed, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for the truth of this message. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us to a place where we can hear this kind of truth. Lord, we thank you, God, even though some of it may have been bitter to us or it may have been hurtful or it may have just been made us uncomfortable because it's things that we're struggling with things that we're trying to better ourselves areas we're trying to better ourselves things where we haven't been consistent or whatever father god you brought us here to hear this word so that we can fix it and it can be fixed by you your power god your love your understanding it's beyond what a man can give us it's beyond what a, even an earthly father can give us god you can give us another chance. Father God, you can help us to be the father that we need to be. So we pray right now. Come on, lift your hands up. Every father, lift your hands. We pray right now, Father God, that you would help us in our endeavors to please you as a father. Father God, to love our wives, love our children, to be that man that we know we can be. God, the man that we envision sometimes seems so far away from us, especially when we fail and make mistakes and errors. We feel like it's just so hard to be that. But God, you can make us what you want us to be. So we ask that you fix us, Lord. Fix everything that's broken. Fix the broken heart, the broken spirit. Fix the broken mind, the broken attitude. Fix, Father God, the broken heart. Father God, fix everything that needs to be fixed so that we can be fathers that stand strong in this last hour. In Jesus' name. And God, while we're here, we pray for our families, our wives, our children. Father God, we pray for their understanding. Father God, we pray that they will continue to follow our lead as we follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, hug each other, fathers. Say happy Father's Day. Blessings on you and your family. Hallelujah. 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 Wives and folks in the audience, y'all should have gave a round of applause for all of these strong men in this church strong men here to protect you make sure don't nothing happen ain't nothing happening in abc now folk know better all these men man i'm so proud of this elder all these men man thank god for that a church full of men Save Godly me.